and we'll move on uh, from the issue of the constituencies and I'm getting even information that uh, two new suits have been filed. It appears that that issue will not rest anytime soon. We'll move on to, uh, but still staying around Parliament, uh, Parliament's Public Accounts Committee had had its sitting uh, this week and the highlight was uh, Alfred Agbesi Woyome, uh, the beleaguered the businessman who appeared before the committee and decided to exercise his legal right not to speak and challenge the, 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 the committee's <clears throat> authority uh, to, to hear the matter or to probe the matter because um, various aspects of the matter, that is the controversial 51 uh, million Ghana CD judgment <coughs> debt payment to him, are in courts. You have one in the uh, in the financial court. Uh, you have one in the commercial court. That's the financial criminal division, uh, and you have another leg of it <coughs> at the Supreme Court. Forgive me. And I understand there's another part of it also at the Court of Appeal. So he was exercising his uh, legal right not to uh, be forced to speak on the matter. I'm sure that you have followed what happened subsequently. <coughs> um, commit committee Chairman Albert Kandapa uh, was, they also raised issues of potential bias against him because he and the Deputy Chairman, uh, Kweku Ajiman Menu, because they were uh, cabinet members of the Kofo administration uh, that allegedly abrogated that particular uh, contract leading into the judgment debt of 51 million to Alfred Woyeme. Well, they recused themselves subsequently. A friend of the committee, Hakman Ousajiman, who is also uh, of the NPP, also had to recuse himself, but pointed out before he did so that uh, Woyeme's brother, also a member of parliament, was sitting in the committee. I don't know if he would also recuse himself, or he did. <clears throat> now, the, the, there's a division in the committee. A new chairman has been appointed, that is acting, uh, Isaac Esiema, but the members of the committee say that he cannot take that role. Why? Because they think that uh, it is parliament that constituted the committee, and if there's to be any changes, the matters ought to be referred to Parliament to decide. Um, once again, I come to you, uh, Abdul Rashid Perpo. How do you how, how do you how do you feel about the developments in Parliament as regards the committee's hearing in respect specifically to Woyomi's uh, matter? Um, first of all, it is important for us to note that we work with the law, but we also work with precedents. Mm. And there is precedent in the committee that invoke the principle and the order in our standing orders that says that um, if a matter is before court, you don't discuss it if you think that the outcome in the opinion of Madam Speaker will prejudice, 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 you know, prejudice the outcome of the case. So, I mean, it has become a general principle that runs through all our, our interaction with issues that are, um, have to do with the court. So, sorry, but I can't help to ask you immediately. I thought that people who come before the committee, whatever they say on that committee is privileged privilege and cannot be used in evidence in court. Uh, it is not about evidence at all. If we, we discuss issues in, in, in Parliament, nobody is going from Parliament to bear witness or mm -hmm. to be a witness to any case. Mm -hmm. but, the, but, the, but the order has access to abstain from such discussions. Which order? There's an order in our, our, our standing orders. Um, I've forgotten the, the particular order, but there's an order there that says that. In fact, we have battled with this severally. And so I, I think that we have a problem here. And so the, when the issue about the Millennium um, Accounts, what do you call that? The, the, the Millennium um, Challenge Account. Not Millennium Challenge Account. The Ghana at 50. The Ghana at 50 came before Parliament. And at the committee level, the issue came up. And when the issue came up, the understanding was that because the matter was in court, we could shelve it. And it was shelved until when 
the court took a decision, you know, before uh, 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 people were invited to the committee and, you know, the issues were then discussed. there's an appeal on that matter pending. That case court. is still pending. It's in court on yeah. two levels. Yeah, but before... That case is in court. Yeah, yeah between the time the appeal was done and the time the case had been done, that space of time... I know Ricky Broby was invited to the No, but it cannot committee. be true. Ricky Broby was there only recently. And yeah. as the time he was there, being mm -hmm. interrogated, the appeal of or the, uh, the state's appeal was pending. Yeah, so and they also had filed an appeal against the findings yeah, but, of the, but the, the, so truth the case is, that, is The truth is that mm -hmm. at, a, mm -hmm. at the very moment when the case came to the committee's attention and they wanted to go into it, that, that, that order was raised. And they dropped it. They dropped the case. Mm. Later on, uh, Reku Brobi had to appear before the, the, the committee. I mean, because of that general principle and gen the order also found in our standing order, I'll, f I'll get it for you very soon. You know, we 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 had that uh, understanding. So one, there is an order. There's something about legal. Uh, uh, there's something legal about it, and there's a precedent to it. So we work with the law, and we also work with the precedents. So the expectation was that he wouldn't even be invited at all. But if despite all that he is invited and he goes to the place, he still has a constitutional right to say he would not talk because the outcome of the court is greater than any other, any other outcome that is besides the court. Especially the criminal matter. Yeah, especially in criminal in matters. Mm. The, final, the, final, the finality of it all can be found in the court, not in the in the committee of uh, the, the, the the public accounts committee, you know. So what is it that we are looking for in the at the public accounts to find the truth about something, to find whether there was a criminal indictment about it or there was a criminal action or not? Beyond all that, it's in the court. So I don't know what we were looking for. Coming, calling him to find out something that... In the end, the committee is actually supposed to recommend if he was supposed to be Yeah, prosecuted. the committee will recommend that he yeah. should face the court. The man is in court. So if, not, if it is not because uh, somebody wants to make a political gain out of it, if it's not because of that, I suspect that we could have had reason to understand what is happening. <coughs> but, of course, the committee is chaired by, um, you know... Um, Honorable Kandapa, who is insisting that he thought that, in fact, I had a, a, a discussion with him, and he thought that it was necessary that he invited him despite the president's and that the president had no place in what is happening. And I agree with him because if it is a view of the committee, no single individual can contradict the committee. Now, there's the accusation of partisanship, needless. That's why I'm, I've made that reference to if no political gain, is seek, nobody seeks to gain political out of it. Not either us or them, you know. If there's no certain, then I think that we could easily have reasoned this out, you know, for two reasons. First, because by reference to our own standing orders, you could say, let's leave it there. Secondly, because there had been a precedent, or, or with, also with tied to that, because there had been a precedent, we could also say, let's leave it until we, you know, at a, at a later time. Yeah. Now, but the other issue also is that if we, we don't want politics to creep into the whole thing, we don't have to do that. Because why? It, 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 this is a matter, a matter that <coughs> is very, very clear to everybody and to us all, that beyond the investigation we are doing, the recommendation we want to make, the end result is already, we've already met the end results. We can foresee that there is, it's not even foreseeing. We see that the matter is in court. And the man is criminally charged for an offense, you know, and it's, it's in court. And can, the outcome can be either way. He might be convicted or not. So I don't think that um, Wyoming is wrong. He's right to go out there and say he wouldn't talk. He's right to insist that um, if the matter is in court, he would prefer to give evidence in court rather than the PAC, which is an inferior body. Of course, we have the... The, the, the status of, an, of a higher court, of, of a higher court, but it's inferior in terms that we don't adjudicate. And so I think that the, the point where um, 
Great. Do you find do you find that the the committee can actually function effectively with the heckling that goes on, particularly where you have Wayami appearing and the chairman is challenged at everything, every decision he makes, there's 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 a suggestion that look, you can't take that decision alone. It's important because we had we had kept quiet, the committee members had kept quiet too long. There had been instances where even organizers asking that there should be a sitting. Some committee members say, we sit in the house and we are called and say there's a sitting, so they go. You know, they, they, I'm sorry to say this because I, there should have been one of them here or maybe the chairman to defend it and all that. So let me leave those ones that I know privately about the committee. But where they, but are, it's meeting, important that where they, where they are meeting, the hearing is going on mm. and the chairman needs to take a decision and you have members saying that you can't take that decision alone. Yes, right? it's important because a committee decision is a committee decision. It's not but a decision what, by I, the chairman. What, I, what I'm, I'm thinking and wondering is that what is the use of the chairman? I understand that generally when you vest in somebody chairmanship, he has the right to speak for and on behalf of the, of the whole. It shows that. And particularly in such situation because if he has to be challenged every second, anything he says, and if everything has to be referred to the entire membership of the committee, then you definitely won't be it able to make any no progress. It means there's no consensus on the issue they are discussing. There must be consensus. In Parliament, before we do pu our public show, as you see, mm. there is committee meetings. You, you treat every issue until you come to a point. Yesterday, you may have heard that the minority side opposed me when in reading the business statement, I proposed that the, we could sit on Saturday. Even at that committee level, it was it was kicked against and, and fought very, very vigorously. You see, so uh, when things like that me. happen mm. in the, at, the, at the closed door, you either drop it or you massage it before you bring it out to the public. Mm. So what you are seeing there means that the other didn't talk about it or when it came out, they opposed it and he brought it out in the public and they will still oppose it. Okay, And now, they have now, the rights. Now, let, let, me, let me ask Godwin, let me ask you this way. Do you find it absurd and getting into a situation where it will become practically impossible for the committee to be able to do anything where uh, they, are, they are having the hearing, the chairman doesn't appear to have any power to make any decision, that any decision has to be by consensus. So what are they saying? Do they have to go in camera, meet, come back? If he raises an objection and they disagree, they have to pause and go and come back. It sounds to me as an absurd situation. Well, I mean, generally speaking, if you are made the chairman <coughs> of a body, you are vested automatically with basic powers, which have to do with routine matters of the body. So you are to ensure that there is order. You are to ensure that the basic, I mean, reason why you are there, I mean, is not um, interfered with unnecessarily. At the same time, you will need to build consensus but you build consensus on very fundamental issues, but not, I mean, routine matters. Mm. So on those routine matters, the chairman has the automatic power to take decisions without reference to other members. Otherwise, like you rightly said, if every single thing has to be decided on the basis or by reference to other, then there will be no, I mean, the committee or the board cannot function. But it is the very important thing that we have to, I mean, seek the views of others. But even then, I would have thought that these are very critical issues which have not just arisen, mm. but they have been in the public domain for quite some time now. And Parliament, and for that matter, its appropriate committees must have discussed these things, I mean, in camera or at some other private place, and agree on certain broad modalities on how to proceed. It will be embarrassing that in the full glare of the public, you have members of the committee not agreeing with their chairman on very important matters that the average member of the general public would have thought that as a body, they should have I mean, resolved but, but, those but, questions. But yeah. it is also right for members of the committee to challenge or to raise issues where, uh, where the chairman, he's been giving some discretion to, to operate. But like we say, judges have a lot of discretion, but that discretion ought to be exercised judicially. So if they find that he's going out of order, Agreed. they should be able to bring him You can do to so order. 
without necessarily bringing the office of the chairman into radical. I mean, they have been having series of sittings. So if on two, three occasions you have observed that the chairman, I mean, failed to live up to a certain standard, you can criticize him, I mean, behind the scenes. You don't do that, I mean, in public, because it is the office that you must, as it were, I mean, protect. But then there is also an obligation on the part of the chairman to be sensitive to some of the issues that his colleague members may not be very comfortable with and to chair the, 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 the committee in a manner that will build consensus. To the substantive matter, how yeah. do you find uh, William is uh, positioning he and his legal team? In fact, <coughs> it is an issue that I thought would not be where it is now. Why do I say so? At the very end of the day, should he appear before the park, what would the park be doing? To want to find out whether monies were paid, whether those monies were paid to him, whether the payments were in order or not in order the on the basis of, of the, the contract, exactly, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. These are matters of fact. So when these matters of fact are established, then the question is, do they disclose or reveal any wrongdoing? If that is the case, I will have been a suspect they may either invite the police to investigate further and prosecute if need be. They may seek the, the assistance of the Attorney General to take necessary steps, or even the IOCO, I mean, as the case may be. So you have a picture of multiple institutions, I mean, having to play or perform what I may call overlapping functions. Now, the matter is in court. The very things that the pack may be raising mm. are being raised mm. by the criminal court, by the civil court. So therefore, to me, I mean, would it not be advisable that since these matters got to the court before the PAC began its meeting, it could hold on. So that when the court completes its proceedings and there are still outstanding issues, then PAC can come in. Mm. Because what is happening now, I mean, is, uh, it, it's, it creates a situation that I think we shouldn't encourage. If institutions that perform overlapping functions do not cooperate and collaborate on these matters, you will have a situation in which the wheels of state institutions can grind to a halt because the institutions do not cooperate. So as far as you're concerned, you know, PAC doesn't have any job in this matter. No, no I mean, it's the constitutionally they have a role to play, mm -hmm. but to ensure that there is some sort of cooperation because another institution that also has the money to handle the matter is handling it. Raising, I may be wrong, but if I am right, raising the same issues that PAC would have been raising. Mm. If that is the case, will it not be advisable? That would not be to deny that the PAC has the constitutional mandate to deal with the issues. Mm. It's just deferring for the time being. But, but since the yeah. uh, PAC is in, intransigent, so to speak, or uh, doesn't seem to agree with Wyoming's lawyers. Maybe the, the shortest route to take is for his lawyers to go to court and to injunct to them, to stop them from uh, going into the matter. That would be very interesting because I've been um, under the constitution, I've been witnesses someone before parliament are entitled to the same uh, protection exactly. as if they were in a court of law. Mm. So if he comes before <laughs> you and then say, that, look, I have the right not to incriminate myself, you can take it away from me. All right. Now, yeah. um, I'll come to you, Kovna. Wayomi <coughs> has uh, spoken through his aid that he won't appear anyway. He won't go back. If they invite him, he will not show up. Well, <coughs> I'm, I'm a bit disappointed in the parliamentarians. See, we have to build our state institutions. And the Public Accounts Committee should be seen as a public yeah. accounts committee. And this is not the first time we've had the sittings of the public. We've had one chaired by, I think, G.H. Mensah. Rashidi, if I'm mm -hmm. right, you've been in parliament yeah, for long. Yeah, yeah. And then Alban Dhabi. Yeah. You know, and they were very contentious issues. But at the time, somehow or the other, the, the committee is able to hold oh, together yeah. as a whole. I think now, um, because of the nature of the case itself, it's been overly political, although this is something that should contain, I mean, that, that really deals with our treasury. Yeah. We should be basic and of concern United, to everybody. Yeah. You understand. It appears members of the NDC are being overly political, maybe, maybe to some extent some of our members as well. But very clearly, this is a committee. You have a chairman. 
you should have meetings before you come out in the public. I think the conduct of some of the NDC members to try and ridicule their own chairman in public is, is, something, is something that I find very unparliamentary. It shouldn't be done. And if you have issues, maybe you should quickly rise, up, rise up and go know. into camera and resolve these issues quickly. Because what they are doing is denigrating their own institution, the institution of parliament. But what do you do because if you are asking of the chairman to go into camera and he doesn't seem to want to listen? I'm sure they meet. How, how, that hasn't happened. So I don't want to hypothesize. That hasn't happened. I think that we should recognize institutions for what they are. State and gun affairs, state institutions. Of course, this is a very dicey issue. Just like the Ghana at 50 as well. You understand? That and at the Ghana at 52, the NPP uh, members were accused of attempting to speak for uh, uh, Dr. Charles Rekobrobe as they are now accusing the NDC of and attempting to speak And that's why I'm saying Oyome. that members of parliament should know that they are members of parliament of Ghana. Of course, when it gets to the vote, they belong to parties. But this is... Unless we want to do away with the work of the Public Accounts okay. Committee. If it has no teeth, what is the point? Wasting yeah, yeah. state resources, mm -hmm. money, time, and if it's not going to do anything. Yeah. But I think it has an important <laughs> function. Because the review of the Auditor General's report has thrown up so many things we would otherwise not have seen. Yeah. So personally, I think it's a very important institution. How we make it work, because as we say, it's not a judicial body. Oh, is it, you, a are, fact -finding you are you are a lawyer, yes, so yeah. you are it's a lawyer. Fact finding, but yeah. has been vested with the powers of the High Court only yes. limited. Yes, powers. but it cannot pass a sentence. That's or it cannot law. penalize. No. So we sh maybe the parliamentarians should be asking themselves, what should be the ultimate goal of the PAC? Is it just to review the Auditor General's report and make recommendations to who? Because in this particular matter, I mean, when I see the posturing of the NDC in these issues. In this particular matter, it is their own attorney general that is conducting a criminal prosecution. It is not the MPP. Let's be very, very clear. It is the attorney general of the sitting government that <laughs> recognized that there had been a mistake and are going after the money to try and recover it for the people of Ghana. So, so why, why bring the person back to that's the why I'm saying that. That is why I'm saying that at the PAC level, you, you they, normally, I'm, I'm sure that they they should do these things in camera and take a decision. Say, yes. look, maybe we don't need to invite this guy, or if you invite him, you should expect you plead in America. They say what well, Fifth Amendment, mm. <laughs> you and because you are allowed to plead that you won't talk to incriminate yourself, yeah. so that we don't have. But when we have situations where citizens are talking as if they want to overrule state institutions, mm. that is dangerous. Mm. That should not be allowed. Yeah. So citizens of this country cannot say, I will not respond to, to so and so again. That should not be allowed. Then we are undermining yes, our democracy true. and undermining the state institutions. If you are subpoenaed, you have to be there. Otherwise, then there's going to be a breakdown of law and order. But knowing but what the, you know, knowing yeah, what you yeah. know about this particular case, yeah. should the uh, uh, PAC be inviting you? I don't want to pass judgment on a state institution such as PAC, which is a, it's a very serious institution. I think... <coughs> They should have been more internal discussions. And having seen that the matter, there's a criminal matter in court, and those issues that they are going to ask, in any case, it's a lot of these matters so have come out already. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of these matters have come out already. Everybody knows the issue about the, the, this case. He himself, and the man himself, has come out to say that he never had an official contract. We don't want to try the case here on this year program. You understand? A lot of the issues have come out already. I would have thought that the PAC will either take a decision, look, we invite him <coughs> just figuratively <laughs> to let people of the country know that the PAC is working. Is working. And when it, they invite you, you have to respond. You understand? You cannot sit there and say you won't do it because they have the powers to subpoena you. And if you don't do so, they can then put you in trouble. Yeah. So that is a completely different issue. I think that Parliament, people in Parliament, when it gets to such an issue, should go back into camera. It happens in other jurisdictions. Go back into camera, resolve the issue, and then come out and look better. What happened there was a mockery of our parliamentary system and reduces, you want to reduce your own chairman? 
Today is an MPP member who is in this, the seat. But that will not be there forever. The next day it could be an NDC member in the seat. It is the, the opposition. That's right. It's <laughs> the chair and the committee, the institution that we need to protect. The sanctity of that institution and how it works. If it is our view that it's become a talk shop and therefore it's a waste of our state resources, we have to look at it and, and deal with it. If we think that it's good and it exposes certain things that it has done, then let's find a way of rationalizing it. That's, that's my, my take uh, on it. Uh, we'll Abdul Malik, we'll take your advice uh, on <laughs> <laughs> Abdul Malik, how, how do you see things uh, working going forward? Because the, min the majority won't have Isaac Asiyama as the chairperson in respect of the Wyoming matter. Just a little comment, sorry. I mean, I, I, I don't quite agree with Kandapa that he should even stand down. No. I don't agree with him. That's, that is a position that you occupy. No, but if a question of potential bias has been raised no, against you, but you step down how? just like this would based do. Based on what? It's potential bias. Based on what? That he was a cabinet and uh, so, minister and so what? in the uh, MPP <laughs> regime. And so, and so what? He is the PSC chairman and he should be the one in the chair. Okay. Koku, what do you yeah, say? Yeah, uh, but before then, uh, my friend uh, Rashid, Rashid mm. uh, done me a favor. He has uh, pointed to the standing order, which uh, he was earlier referring to. And that you don't entertain uh, matters yeah, in court. That is order 93. Uh, and he says, that's 93.1. Mm -hmm. He says, reference shall not be made to any matter on which judicial decision is pending in such a way as may, in the opinion of Mr. Speaker, prejudice the interest of parties to the action. It's qualified. Yes, but I have a problem. Yeah. Uh, I'm an educator when it comes to law, so <laughs> you can teach me. <laughs> Part 14, it says rules of debate. This comes under the subtitle rules of debate. <laughs> I'm not sure if this can be, you know, transported into the standing order that guides the public accounts committee's proceedings, work and conduct. No, let, let me make it clear. I said it's in our standing orders <coughs> and has been developed in a principle which guides our behavior. Committees are just as much as, it's, okay. it's as equal as if you were in the house. The same uh, rules uh, that vices are plenary are the same rules that guys this no, at the no, committee. No, Thank I you still, for that I point. still have a problem with that because I see a distinction between debate on the floor of the House, which is under the supervision of the Speaker, and the work of a committee, in this case the Public Accounts Committee, that has a specific agenda, duty to perform. I see a distinction. And that's why you see the Speaker is not at the Public Accounts Committee. But the chairman is, is the speaker a, a, acting on his on yes, her behalf. Yes, but she's, she's not there. So, and mm. in any case, there's rules of debate. I have a feeling mm. this heading is such that it makes this Order 93 inappropriate to apply to the work of the Public Accounts Committee. I may be wrong, but that's the way my layman view is uh, ag agitating me. All right. And uh, I also want to establish the fact that as at the point that Dr. Reku Brobe was before the Public Accounts Committee and answering questions, the Ghana at 50 case was pending in court and is still pending in court on two levels. The state's appeal against Justice Safu, is it Mafu, Mafu Sao. Sao's Mafu Sao. ruling mm -hmm. is pending. Brobe and Impini also filed an appeal against the findings. You know, within the constitution, mm. they, have, they had a, a period of six months or so to appeal. Yeah. Mm. To so there are two cases relative to Ghana at 50 pending. The majority members of the Public Accounts Committee did not see anything wrong with that. They proceeded to question Brobe, even though those cases are in court. Brobe felt whether they are in court or not, I would cooperate with the Public Accounts Committee. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the Public Accounts Committee's job, there's a fine line of extension between that and the jobs of the courts. The courts are doing judicial determination of issues. 
the public account is completing the auditing process initiated by the Auditor General. Indeed, the trust of his work is possibly, could possibly help us to review the financial administration system. They are not engaged in prosecution. What you mean? It's a witness, not an accused person before the committee. I concede. But their work could lead to uh, prosecution. No, I'm coming. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And indeed, there's even the point that what you say there cannot be used against you in a court of law. It's in the, uh, the Constitution or yes. somewhere. So there's an anticipation. So I see there's a problem, you know, that eventually, of course, in the ne interest of enhancing our democracy, we may have to interrogate again at the appropriate form. It, it, was, it, was bro it was bro based choice not to object. As far as uh, William is concerned, I, I, I haven't he finished. I'm saying, yeah, but that shows something. Mm. That's, that shows something. You want to cooperate with the committee of parliament to allow the committee to discharge its constitutional responsibility. William was not there only to talk, to answer questions. He was also there to provide documents, some of which are not self incriminating. Those documents, he might have given some to the uh, police already, and yet he's not yet a convict. He's not yet been sentenced or convicted by any court. The, the Public Accounts Committee must have the benefit of those documents to be able to even to understand how those payments were affected by the MDAs that were involved in the process. Who says this cannot be done without self-incriminating yourself? You see, with, with the intransigence... But, 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 but if he's not talking, they should compel him to produce the but documents. They have the right I'm to saying, compare the production. I, I, that's where I'm coming to. I am saying that the letter of invitations tells, says two things. Come and assist the committee in this, the investigations of the payment. Then goes further to say, in, when you are coming, you are reminded to bring documents. It's twofold. The summons that actually got him coming there said this so. Let's be honest. At the end of the day, the authority of parliament was recognized and respected by Woyumi relative to his earlier intransigent position of not appearing. He needed a summons to make him realize that authority of parliament is important. Don't forget that the speaker was written to, asking that the chairman of the committee wrote to the speaker, asking her to exercise her powers, is it under 105 or so, to, ask that, uh, to issue a warrant of arrest and ask the IGP to bring him there. These two things, inform the shift in the position of William. Indeed, the Attorney General and the Minister of Finance had taken similar positions of not cooperating with uh, PAC because of the sub GDK uh, status of the cases. Eventually, they changed and went there, again, making William a lone ranger. He, was, he felt isolated. My point really is this. See, I agree that ultimately, we may have to do some further interrogation of this issue at the Supreme Court to understand how these things may be done. Enough, we are developing as a democracy. So bottom line, that is it. But I'm saying that even before then, let's enlighten people on some of the issues and let people see that a certain level of non-cooperation at this stage is unfair to the good people of the, this country. See, you have been paid monies by a ministry. You were paid based on documentation. Documentation. Those documents being made available to PAC will not constitute a fatal injury to your case, either in the civil courts or the criminal courts. How will you know that? Of course not. <laughs> those, yes, of course not. The payment, the payment, the checks and all those things, the contrary and accountant general things, the, the PAC can get those two from other sectors. But sometimes the witness ought to be the one submitting some of those things. So there could be a certain level of documentation that William May should be able to provide to PAC, and I repeat, without causing a fatal injury to his case. It will not be judgmental or prejudicial. I'm saying that even that extent, we're not encouraging him to do. And that amounts to disrespect and disregard of the authority of the committee. If I were on the committee, I would issue another summons demanding that specific, demanding certain documentations. 
within their right to yes, do so. They can do so. Yes. Mm. And the Attorney General as well. Those summons must be directed to the Attorney General, to the Ministry of Finance, to the Controller and Accountant General, and to the Bank of Ghana. Those documents can and must be made available to the PAC without it will have no negative effect on the cases in court. Let's not create the impression that the mere submission of those official documentations to a PAC, so that PAC can do at least a certain level of the job in terms of re-examining the auditing process. The Auditor General has submitted an Auditor General support. The PAC, there is no law as we speak that tells the PAC not to do examination of that report. There's no law. There's no law. So the PAC must ask for those documents from all these sectors that I've mentioned, including Mr. Woyomi. And let's see who will say there's a law that disables him or her from providing those documents to the PAC. We'll move on beyond that. All Bottom right. line, let's solve some of the issues mm. at the Supreme Court. Mm. All right. It Thank will help you. our democracy. Thank you very much, Kokubaku mm -hmm. Jr. And the question of uh, bias that was raised against those members, I'm getting uh, some education by a very senior um, lawyer, and he says that there is a clear distinction between a charge of bias made against a fact-finding body, uh, a charge of bias made against a judicial body. The, uh, the PAC is a fact-finding body. A charge of bias is not well founded against it. And I'm being referred to uh, the decision of the Court of Appeal in the Commission on Human Rights and um, some other matters. Thank you very much, Senior, for that uh, education.